So I picked up this cheap little cauldron for just a couple bucks at the Halloween store. So today I'm going to show you how to take a cheap prop like this and give it some new life by making an artificial fire pit for it. As DIY Halloween projects go, the artificial fire pit is one of the easiest ones. You only need a couple of tools and a couple of materials. The whole thing's not going to cost very much and you can do it easily in an afternoon. The base for my fire pit is going to be this scrap of plywood that I have lying around. I'm just going to cut that down to size with my jigsaw. But you can use pretty much anything for the base. A piece of plastic, piece of wood, whatever you've got. The fire is going to be generated by these orange lights, just a small string of orange lights. You can get those, again, five or ten bucks from the Halloween store or Amazon or Walmart or anywhere has those. You'll also need, if you want a cauldron, you'll need a cauldron. This one was ten bucks at Spirit Halloween. You can get these cheap anywhere. And then the thing that really makes it all work is great stuff expanding spray foam. That's going to be the uh, the, the hot coals or embers. And then lastly, we will need some paint. Black, red, and a little bit of gray to make it look like ash. In addition to that, I am also using one of my cheap fog machines. That's optional, but if you want to use that, those also are not too expensive, and I'm just using one that I happen to have lying around. To start off with the base, I roughly traced approximately the size and shape I want. Just an almost circle-ish kind of shape on this plywood. I'm going to cut that out with the jigsaw. And that'll do. Certainly not a perfect circle. Doesn't matter even the slightest. This is a uh, fire pit for a witch's cauldron, so it doesn't matter if it's perfectly circular. If you want it perfectly circular, you could use a compass, trace it out. I don't care. The next thing I want to do is cut these labels off of the string of lights, just in case anything shows through. And I don't need the warnings anyway, because I'm not an idiot. And with that done, we'll just position these lights approximately how we like them. Make sure that the cord is hanging well out the back end, because you don't want that to get buried in the spray foam when we apply that. You also don't want them to sit perfectly flat. You want them, you know, not raised up, but sort of loose, let's say. But still close enough that they're sort of packed together, sort of like this. That looks pretty good. And the next step is the spray foam itself. This stuff is actually for filling gaps and cracks, but DIY haunters have come up with a lot of great uses for this stuff. It's perfect for this job. A couple words of warning about this stuff. First is it needs to be shaken well, and in fact, once you think you've shaken it enough, shake it a little bit more because it needs a lot of shaking action. And the second word of warning is, when you use this stuff, you really want to be wearing gloves. If you get this on your fingers, it's not going to come off for a really long time. So, wear gloves. And then, once you're all shaken up, the nozzle just screws on. One more shake, just for good measure. And then we're ready to go. And we don't want this so thick that it's obscuring the lights completely. We want the lights to shine through. But we want everything completely covered. I'm also trying to make something of a flat surface on the top because I want to set the cauldron there. And that should do. Now we're going to let this sit for a while. I want it to get maybe not 100% cured, which takes several hours, but at least 
mostly cured before I bother uh, painting it, because painting will be the next step. Now while that's curing, I want to work on the cauldron itself a little bit. I'm going to put a fog machine down inside, and I just need to drill some holes for the cords to run through. These are the cords, so I just need to find an appropriate bit that's just a smidge wider than these. I have a set of Forsner bits, and I will just choose an appropriate one. This one looks pretty good. And at this point, there's really not much more for me to do. This stuff is drying. I've got the cauldron ready with the hole drilled through the back. The fog machine is ready to go. I've tested the lights. Everything's working. Everything's worked well. Everything's gone better than most of my projects end up going. So now it's just a waiting game. I think maybe I'm going to go see the new Halloween movie which is just out this weekend as of when I filmed this. I'm not sure when it'll be posted. And hopefully when I come back, this will be ready to go. I can get it painted, and then I'll be able to put it out and put some stones around it to make it look like a real fire pit. And it'll be a nice Halloween decoration without too much trouble. Well, it's now the next day. I did indeed go see Halloween Kills last night while I was waiting for this to cure. That was an excellent movie, and y'all should see it. I had a blast. But now this is all nice and hard, nice and firm solid foam stuff. All it needs now is some paint. I have black, gray, and red. I'm mostly going to use the black, just a little bit of the gray and the red to make it look kind of like ashes and hot coals. And the important thing on this is to do a really light coat of paint because we don't want to obscure the lights too much. The advantage is if a little bit of this foam shows through, it's meant to just be ashes and hot coals anyway, so not a big deal. So we can go very light safely. And I think that should do. It looks pretty good sitting out here in the light. Let's plug it in and see how it looks. There we go. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but it looks like a nice glow under all of the, the ash. Exactly what I wanted. Looks like hot coals to me. I'm happy with that. So now we just need to let this dry for a little while while I work on a different project, and then I will pop the cauldron on, slide the fog machine in, and give it a final test run, make sure everything's running smoothly. And now that it's a little bit darker out, I just have some dim lights in the garage so you can see more than just the red glow. You can see the red glow underneath looks pretty good. The cauldron on top. And then of course... And so there is the fogging cauldron and the glowing fire pit. Stay tuned for more builds and more book reviews and all kinds of horror goodness. And until next time, take care and stay scared.